Hi, I'm Greg Garcia here at the Tying Room at Angler's All in Littleton, Colorado. Today I'm going to tie a pattern, a streamer that's uh, I think everybody's favorite. It's called the Sculptzilla. We're going to tie it in a little bit smaller size so it's a little bit more fishable, a little easier to cast and uh, go through a couple of different techniques that we probably haven't seen on any of our videos. So uh, I'm real excited to tie this one. So let's get started. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm we're going to start with the trailer hook. Um, this is a Gamagatsu um, size 8 octopus hook. And I've gotten some uh, Power Pro 40 pound test. And what I'm going to do is put this through the eye. I'm going to just kind of pre-prep this first. There we go. Okay, so we got the Power Pro. And I've put it through the eye of the hook. Doubled up those strands. And then what I'm going to do is I pull the draw this down. I'm going to bring this loop underneath the hook. Then as I tighten up, you can see that this knot is on top of the hook. I'm going to put that back into the vise at this point. Have some uh, Dansville 3 aught in olive. I'm just going to get this started. Just lay down a little bit of base of thread. Then I'm going to grab my strip of bunny. Before I tie, even tie this on, what I like to do is kind of prep this a little bit and that I like to square this off on the back side. And then I like to put a little slight cut or taper into the back. I don't think this is necessary. It's not going to kill the fly or make it the most fishy. It just makes it look better. So we kind of have that little scandy cut, as they call in the tube world of uh, tube flies. And then this little strip, I'm going to tie this on top of the hook. And it's going to be about the length of the hook. So that's going to be your guide. And then... Uh, Get a little water, put a little fly cup on my bench, keep it there for wetting material, soft tackles or tubbing or whatever I need to, I'm using that particular day. And then I'm going to mount this right on top. Give it three, four good, good wraps. And I'm going to lift that backwards, put a little thread base right behind that knot, and then I'm going to whip finish this off. I usually just let my bobbin hang there, and as I made one wrap, I can get that out of the way instead of trying to do four wraps and then have a big mess there. Just uh, Take your time and pop that off like that. Then I can tighten up. Snip that off. And then we'll come back to this piece. Now one thing I like to do before I even go any further is I'm going to debarb this hook. Got these Tamco pliers here, their debarb hook, which is perfect for anything on your bench like this. I'm going to debarb that, not only for the fish, but for us. And uh, if you tie enough, enough of these, you're going to uh, hook your your own finger a couple of times uh, during this process. So without that. That barb, it's easier to take that out of your skin and uh, 
but I'm warning you, your fingers will become a pincushion here a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab a uh, Gamagatsu B10S. <clears throat> you can use a saltwater hook. You know, anything with a straight eye is what we're going to look for. Um, I like this uh, black nickel look on this hook. And for trout, I think the uh, saltwater hook's a little bit overkill. Uh, going to mount a cross-eyed cone. These are from uh, Spirit River. And uh, Hairline is a distributor for these. And this is a one-quarter inch in their black. So going to readjust my vise. And this is what we're going to tie the fly on. And then ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to cut the back side of this off. So at this point, I'm going to reattach my thread. I start right behind that cone, just as though there was nothing there. And I'm going to bring my thread right back to, if I drop my thread straight down, I'm going to be right at the barb of that hook. So that's going to give us enough length for the body of this fly. Now we're going to re-grab this piece and I'm going to attach this cording onto the hook. How long do we need to go out? It kind of depends on the size of the fly you're going to tie. If it's a bigger fly, of course, I'd use with a longer chassis, a uh, lot bigger hook. But on this one, these guys are going to be fairly on the smaller side. So um, think about that this piece here of power cord should be about the length of your trailer hook. So about right where my thumb is pinching that should work out. I can lay that straight down on top of the hook, make a couple, two, three wraps forward. And then if I need to adjust this back or forth any way I want, I can do that. But uh, that looks good to me. So I'm going to keep these uh, pieces right on top of the hook. And I'm going to wrap this forward. And uh, the reason why we do this is we just want this trailer hook to be secure on this hook shank. We don't want anything to go anywhere from a big fish of a lifetime pulling on it. So now I'm going to grab both these pieces. Um, I might even up this tip here. Might make it a little easier in the long run. A little bit different scissor. There we go. And then I'm going to grab both of these tips of this power cord, go in to the front of the bead or the cone. And then, as you can see there, it's right on top. Then I'm going to drop it into the eye. Pull straight down so they're parallel to each other. And then one last thing, we're going to bring these back through the cone from the front back. And as I pull on that pre pull pressure on there, you can see how that's tied up against the eye. And then with my thread, I can trap it. And then I'm just going to continue backwards Gonna get this out of the way if you can't see that on the camera and by doing that you can see how now this body is set up it doesn't have any bumps any lumps it's just nice and smooth same diameter all the way back and forth then I can trim this cord out. If 
before I do anything else, I'm going to grab a little bit of Zappa Gap. Chances are that thing is in there so tight, doubled up. Anytime you tie in a trailer hook on a big streamer pattern, whether it's for trout or steelhead, it's a good idea to double up that cord. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my water. I'm going to separate the bunny fibers at this tie-in point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back so that that cord is nice and tight. And then I'm going to lay my strip right on top because we don't want the big loose piece of cord back there. Two, three wraps. Check that tie-in point. Then I can pull this strip back and then I'm now ready to dub this body. The body is going to be uh, some pearl ice dub in white. Get a little bit of uh, dubbing wax on my finger for a little extra grip. And let's uh, get this started. Okay, so I'm just going to grab some tips here of this dubbing. I can just pull it right out of the bag like that. And I'm going to do some layers of uh, dubbing as well. I think it makes a little tighter body. And then of course we can uh, also give us a little opportunity that if I want to taper this body, I can do that as well. So I'm going to do one layer up to the eye. And then I'm going to come back. It's times with this uh, coarser dubbing, you can get the tip of uh, it started and it dubs on real easy. I'm going to come back just a little bit and then I'm going to come back forward and you can see by doing that that's kind of started to create a little bit of a taper into this body. Fly is tied almost exactly the way Solitude ties their commercial ones, but with just a couple little wrinkles, this being one of them. I use the power cord, they use 30 pound white backing that would work as well for that trailer. Almost finished with the dubbing. You could also do a dubbing loop as well on this. Some folks like this a real shaggy. Okay, so that's done. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, go back to my water here and uh, part this hair on this rabbit strip. Pull that uh, forward, tie it up against the body, and then tie that into place. Okay. Just want to make sure that's tied in. We don't want that uh, strip of uh, 
bunny to peel off right at the last minute. Okay, next piece we're going to put in is some, uh, typically we would put in on a bigger fly, we're going to would use some uh, red dyed guinea. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use some soft hackle um, marabou that's been dyed. It's a little bit smaller pieces. So I'm just kind of adjusting material for the size of fly we're tying. This is still going to represent some some little gills, some red flaring gills on this fly. Tie in that tip, fold it backwards just to make sure its stem is tied in. Then I can pull this up, maybe get a little bit more moisture on my finger. I can stroke these fibers backwards and uh, I'm going to wrap this on its natural curvature maybe three wraps should do that okay got that in there So it's going to lay in there nice. Then the next piece I'm going to do, same thing. I'm going to use some uh, marabou. In this case, I'm going to use, again, some uh, soft grizzly or soft uh, marabou, just some smaller pieces. At that point, tie this in. Fold that back. You can snip that out of the way if you want, but I think uh, you could probably even leave that in there. I don't think anyone will see that except for us, so let's clip that out. A little bit more moisture. And I'm going to wrap that forward. And if you wrap this on its natural curvature of the stem, everything will go backwards instead of shooting forward and creating a little more problems in the end. Cut that out. There we go, this fly's starting to look cool. Okay, the last piece or two pieces we're going to put on this is uh, I got some whiting chickaboo. A little bit stiffer, a little bit fuller. And these are going to uh, mimic some little flaring gills on each side. So uh, maybe definitely not any longer than the collar of this fly. I'm going to lay uh, one in on the far side of the hook. Tie that in. I'm going to leave this stem in place for the moment. Grab another one. Give them the measurement so they're both the same. Pinching that in on my side of the hook. A couple wraps, tighten up. I'm going to grab both of these stems at the same time and pull them backwards, trapping them. That just makes everything a little bit more durable so we don't peel that out. At this point, just checking how 
Everything's tied in nice. Gonna whip finish this. Now, the last thing we, couple things we gotta do here is we gotta accommodate this rotating bead. So what I'm gonna do is grab a little gap gel. I'm gonna be careful not to get this on any of my marabou. What I'm gonna do is scoot a little bit inside that cone and I'll do it on your side so you can see that on your side there. You can even pop that up a little bit. Let me do this underneath so you can see it on camera. Just running a little bit of that glue underneath the bead and then I want to make sure my eyes are in the right position. Then I'm going to scooch that cone right back into place. Then I'm going to grab some thread. You could use some red thread, white thread, orange thread, whatever you'd like to do. I kind of like, uh, kind of match this uh, piece of, uh, power cord in there and then I'm just going to build up a little dam in front of this cone going to keep everything in place oops glue kind of stuck to my fingers there then I can whip finish Then we just need to put some eyes on. I'm going to go back to my zap a gap. I'm going to put one little dot into this little reservoir for the eyes. While I'm at it, I might put a little bit around my thread head. And then these are uh, some living eyes. I believe they're a three millimeter in uh, diameter in the fire. And these should fit right into that little gap just nicely. Another one that was a little hasty on the zap a gap. There we go. Last thing I need like to do is kind of brush this open. We can give it a little comb. Then last thing we need to do is get rid of that big hook. So get some good wire cutters come in from the bottom. I like to keep the hook in the vise. That way my, that, that hook doesn't go shooting across the room. Then I'm just gonna cut that off. And there we go. There is our Sculptzilla. I can discard that nasty hook. There we go. Give that a shot. 
fish it. Probably one of the most fishy streamers around. We 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 sell a ton of these, and they're very easy to cast, and uh, very fishable fly. Thanks for watching. Have fun.